All right, so I've loaded up a new Flutter project here. Today, we're going to take a look at how to make a 3D cube in Flutter from scratch. As you probably already know, in Flutter, everything is a widget. So to transform something, we should use the transform widget. We've talked about this widget in my other videos before. So let's just take a quick refresher. We can use transform.scale to make its child bigger or smaller. And we can also use rotate and decide how much rotation we want. For example, if we hook it up with the counter variable here, we can see it keeps rotating when we increment the counter. The angle here is in the unit of radian. So if we want 45 degrees, we should pass in pi over 4, and 90 degrees will be pi over 2. 180 flip will be just 1 pi, you get the idea. This rotation, by default, is along the z-axis. If we need more control, we can use the default constructor of the transform widget and pass in a matrix. Here we can modify the identity matrix and let it rotate along x or y-axis. We can also use the alignment property to set its origin to the center. Next, let's give it a 3D perspective. Without a proper perspective, rotation along x-axis does not even look like a rotation. It just looks like it's being squashed. In reality, when objects are further away, they would take up less of our field of view, so they should appear smaller. And closer objects would appear larger. We can play around with the value here to get a feel of different perspectives. Now let's insert a gesture detector here to allow users to control how much to rotate. Let's first print out the details.delta, and we can see it's working when we move the cursor around. Now let's declare a variable at the top. And in the on-pan update event, we need to call set state. We can see that the uh, copilot AI is already filling in, and its suggestion is correct. We do want to add a delta into our offset variable, but there is a better way to write this. The offset class actually already implemented the plus operator, so we can just say offset plus equals details.delta. There's no need to manually add x and y coordinates separately. Let's go back to the transform widget and let it use the offset value we got. We set the rotation x to equal to offset.dy because when we rotate x, it means to rotate along the x-axis and dy is actually the up and down movement on the screen. Moving up and down to make it flip around the x-axis is actually the most natural behavior. Similarly, rotate y should be based on offset.dx here. Now we basically have a nice rotation effect based on our finger or mouse cursor movements. Note here the multiply by pi over 180 thing that the uh, copilot AI automatically filled in. I didn't pay attention at the time, but it's actually very misleading. But it kind of worked as an arbitrary coefficient in this case, a very small value that helped slow down the rotation. Next, we copy out the code we just wrote and delete transform widget from the top of the widget tree because we shouldn't sit here and transform the whole app all day. Since we want a 3D box, we can just insert a transform in its body here so the rest of the app won't be affected. Now let's make a new widget. It can just be stateless, and we call it a cube. It only draws a Flutter logo for now. And let's use it in the body here, delete everything and use our cube instead. And let's wrap it with the center widget. Now we have a 2D Flutter logo that can be rotated, but obviously it's lacking some 3D-ness. It's okay, let's go back to the cube widget. First, let's increase the sides so it's easier to see, and wrap it with a container to give it a red background. Now it kind of looks like a very thin piece of paper. Here comes the important part. As we all know, a cube has six sides or faces. And we've only got one front face here. That's probably why it doesn't look like a 3D cube yet. So let's use the stack widget and duplicate this face here. Let's give it an orange color first. Since they're just copies of each other, they are just on top of each other right now. Let's say this new orange face should be on the right side. So we should give it a transform. To make it turn 90 degrees, we can pass in pi over 2 along the y axis. We can also do negative pi over 2 to make it rotate 270 degrees. In order to make it easier for us to understand the relationships between these six sides, we should set their origins to the center. This way, they will all rotate and translate with respective to the actual center of mass of the cube, instead of rotating one side with respective to another side. This also means we must modify the first phase too. For the orange phase, we made it translate 100 units along the x-axis to push it to the right. So for the red face, we should make it translate 100 units towards the camera. So that's negative 100 on the z-axis. Now let's do a bottom face. I'll just copy the orange face we made and paste it here. Since we're going to make it the bottom side, we should... Oh, let's first give it a different color. Let's say blue. Okay, since we want to make it the bottom face, we should not use rotate Y here. Let's make it rotate along the x-axis 90 degrees so it lies flat on the floor. The rotation here, should it be 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees? Um, I'm actually not sure anymore, but it shouldn't really matter. It just flips the Flutter logo on it. Now let's make it translate 100 units on the y-axis to push it to the bottom. Let's change the negative pi over 2 to positive pi over Yeah, it's, it's fine either way. You know what? Let me just get rid of the Flutter logo so I can stop worrying about this and move on. 
All right, since we need six faces in total, I guess we can have a function here, build face, passing which face you want to build and it will return you a transformed container. Actually, let's first take a look at the three existing faces we made. This one is the orange one, so that's the right side. But it's not always going to be the right side, because the cube can rotate, right? So it can sometimes be on the left side for the audience. So I guess words like left or right isn't very accurate when describing these things. So I decided to borrow a nautical term here, let's call it the starboard. Now let's go back to the main page. I want to add a small feature here. This gesture detector is nice, but sometimes it's not precise enough. So I wanted to add a few sliders for some fine controls. One slider to control Rx, the rotation along the x-axis, and another slider to control rotation on the y-axis. Their range, let's just say 0 to 2 pi for now. Let's get rid of the floating action button that came with the project and declare two new variables at the top, Rx and Ry. Also, since we're still going to support user gestures, we are very likely to get values that fall out of the 0 to 2 pi range, like negative 40 or something. But that's okay, because it circles back every 2 pi of rotation, which is just 360 degrees. So we can just use the modular operator here to get a remainder of the multiples of 2 pi. Also, a quick note here, the modular operator works on negative values as well as decimal values. It's not just an integer thing. Alright, so now some may be wondering, for a 3D cube, why do we only have two controls? Shouldn't we have another slider for RZ? That's right, let's add a third slider right now. Declare the variable, add a slider, and here we can simply call rotate Z and pass in RZ. Here's an interesting observation. When I set both Rx and Ry to zero, we can see that the so-called RZ is actually the most common rotation seen in 2D graphics. It was the default rotation axis when we were using transform.rotate in the beginning of the video as well. All right, so let me quickly copy and paste the code here to construct three more faces. Otherwise, what we've got here looks like a house without a roof, and it's bothering me a little bit. Okay, now we have all six faces, and it starts to look pretty solid as a 3D cube. The layer ordering still needs some work, but the basic proof of concept is done. Now let me briefly talk about why I suddenly wanted to make a 3D cube in Flutter. Some of you may know, I made a sliding puzzle game in the last video, and for the level transition, I wanted to add a simple 3D animation to celebrate the fact that the player solved the puzzle. I've copy-pasted the source code from that project here to give you guys a quick demo. The whole project is open source on my GitHub as well, if you want to take a look. This 3D puzzle piece is built from the same idea, with some optimizations that makes it render only three visible faces at a time. The other faces that are hidden behind do not need to be rendered. I've also used a linear gradient here to simulate a reflection of light. It's implemented by changing the stops of the linear gradient, gradually going from 0 to 1. Let me quickly demonstrate by changing the variable here to v, and with 0, 0 0.2, and 0 0.4 offsets, if I define v as 0, then we'll have 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 down there. But if I change the v to 0 0.1, down here we would have 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5. So I can just keep changing the value of v to shift the reflection beam. And in the actual project, I used the sine function to map the value of rotation y to values in the range of 0 to 1. Alright, so there you have it, how to make a simple 3D cube in Flutter with owning the built-in widgets. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.